Greetings, welcome to this video. Uh, this will be a very short one uh, of which I want to address um, something that was in the news this morning, um, another uh, hate hoax or fake hate as we sometimes call it. A uh, couple of thoughts on it, first of all, and then I think there's a, a good lesson in here for those who um, would be more interested in seeing that. When someone makes a a fake hate claim. There are often, depending on the, the way of the politics, uh, often either no consequences or mitigated consequences. And that can shift uh, over years and years, uh, depending on who's in office and that sort of thing. But they're not victimless crimes. Uh, and they, they do reveal something of the author of these things that I, I think is relevant to those of you that are interested in statement analysis. But they're not always victimless crimes. Um, the Jesse Smollett, uh, or Smollett um, vacate was one of the more obvious ones. And if you recall correctly, politicians came running to his, his aid and his defense and um, while most people were just laughing. It was just kind of this uh, outrageous claims that were being made. And um, like those who do this, these type of deceptions, they just sometimes go too far to make it credible. Now, this particular one is uh, someone who um, is a former White House appointee. He's a candidate for county commissioner. He was previously, I think, working um, the Department of Justice Criminal Division, interesting enough. And he posted this, I'll shut it up here. He posted, these, these are actually clips of his postings to show how he has been a victim of racism. And uh, always remember with a claim of fake hate, there opens the possibility of someone being, or, or more than one, being wrongly imprisoned, wrongly arrested, excuse me, wrongly convicted and wrongly incarcerated. And so one of the things that can be done that could hinder this sort of thing from happening is that if someone making a fake claim, a very serious claim that is false and can be proven to be false, not, not unproven, but proven to be false, um, what about sentencing them to the same length of time that an innocent person would have gotten if wrongfully convicted? And I think that these would uh, quickly disappear. Now, I think they have um, become less and less as we see things becoming a little more savvy in terms of being able to prove something technologically people who think that uh, social media is uh, true anonymity, whether it be um, YouTube or X or Facebook or Instagram, that's not true. And uh, this is one of the cases that highlights that, that um, the accounts can be traced for who's running them. Um, and then also this is not a partisan issue I, I did one from the other party. Uh, someone had made a claim. I think she was in Vermont a couple summers ago running for office and had similar type of, of language. And so as you see, I hope the screen is legible for everyone. These are things that as you look at, you can give consideration to what this person thinks of others. And one of the most powerful things is contempt. And so there is an intended recipient and there's an unintended recipient. The unintended recipient, we sometimes call dog whistling. It's the more important one. And so this fella, uh, Terrell Patel, running for, uh, I guess, county commission down in uh, Texas, has been arrested and charged after uh, an investigation found he allegedly created face fake Facebook accounts to send himself racist, hateful messages. He made many, many fake right-wing Christian pro-Trump accounts using photos of real people and their families. And so here we see someone that went pretty far with this. 
So it goes from you're caught, this is embarrassing, to actually criminal charges. And I think one of the charges is um, felony and the other is misdemeanor. And so he was arrested and uh, I believe bailed out. But he will face these type of charges. The most obvious is going to be the contempt that he holds towards, and, and you look in the, the statements, contempt towards those that he is blaming, falsely blaming. And he's using um, almost juvenile-like um, racist taunts or um, something we might consider to be um, superficial, unoriginal, um, lacking emotion, you know, with the longer sentences and um, some of the emphasis with the exclamation marks he uses. Um, you're not going to take away my freedom and guns. And um, he calls himself a monkey. He turns to the skin color, um, religion, the opposite of the politics. And so you, you see that he has literally contempt for those uh he disagrees with politically. What is often missed on these, though, is the contempt that he has for the unintended recipient. And contempt, which is a deep emotional um, hatred that has an element of elitism within it, the contempt is that if you uh, as he's speaking to his own party, for example, he wants to rally people to vote for him against all this, um, quote unquote, hate. He has contempt for his own. He has contempt for voters that he expects to support him. The message is, is very clear. You can see the, the, on the statements here, the message is, if you hold to these views, you're a bad person which sows more seeds of trouble, incivility, that could lead to violence. And this is how things start. But what is missed so often, I think, is the contempt he has for his own voters, the unintended recipient. He wants to be seen as a victim. And that, that victim status somehow should elevate him above others. But what his message to um, his message of hatred to the opposite is clear and it's plain. But his message to his own supporters is one of also contempt. The message is so, like so many other um, fake hate that seeks to gain something. And the message is very clear. I'm smarter than you. You're too stupid to discern these things. And sure enough, some people fall for it. Others will maybe not fall for it, but use it uh, in an exploitative way. And so we look at these things and we consider what are the ramifications of them? What could happen? Could any of these people with false names and real pictures, apparently, which is um, identity theft, um, could any of them have, have been falsely accused? Now, in this case, they were able to go through the, the pages and trace it back to him. So thankfully, no one will be falsely accused. And hopefully, this guy learns a, a lesson and never enters the public sphere. It's very concerning that he would work any, anything near criminal justice. Because how can you expect someone to do justice when it, they're, they're filled of, of hatred, contempt, and racism in their own language. And so that danger can actually continue. Someone like this, and this is another part about statement analysis that, to give consideration, look into it, look into these statements, and if you get more online, look at them. This person is a fabricator of reality. And if you are familiar with my videos at all, you will remember that the person who is a fabricator of reality is one who poses a terrible risk to society. They're not bound by the same 
um, edges or tethered the way others are. Even if the tethering is just the stress of being caught, which is how we are able to discern de deception in most people, this is rare where someone literally fabricates things that didn't happen. That person poses a risk to society, his wife, his children, others, and whatever level of influence he has in life, whether it be business influence, political influence, wherever it goes, he's a risk. He is a danger to others. He can put ambition in front of things that would protect others. And the same with the, the, uh, the Jesse Smollett case, where he was even willing to testify against his former friends and see them go to prison for what he had invented and paid them for. And without consequences, serious consequences, this sort of crime will continue and there'll be those that have such ambitions that they'll use them without restraint. No matter how clever they may think they are in deception, they'll use them. So take a look at the, um, the statements out there. there. It's in media this morning, so that's where I picked it up on. Take a look at those and begin to see him through the words, where he goes, the length of his sentences, um, any emotionally charged words, for example, exclamation points, punctuation, to look at those things. And what happens is you'll see a pattern of one author writing behind it. And you say, well, this one's already known that it's him. What value is that to us? It's of great value. Rear view mirror analysis is helpful for learning. And so to know that this is the same author everywhere, and then to be able to study his words, you can begin to see the patterns and then apply that to other statements that we don't know are coming up. So the fabricator of the reality, who is someone rare, maybe as low as 10% in the population who lie in this manner, who deceive in this manner, pose a great risk to whoever they have, or whomever they have influence over, family, community, business, po political, et cetera. They pose a risk. This is not someone you'd want prosecuting cases. Uh, this would be someone that would be very much afraid he would pad his career um, with conviction after conviction after conviction that may not be true. And so whatever work he has done in the past should be reopened and examined. Um, as this is something that is very dangerous.